Hey, yo, peace is Lord Jamal, brand Nubian. And on August 13th, 2017, I want y'all to check out the House of Consciousness reunion celebration, where the theme will be unity. Where do we go from here? Starting at 2 p.m. at the Alhambra Ballroom, 2116 Adam Clayton Powell Boulevard in Harlem, New York. That's right, the House of Consciousness reunion celebration, unity. Where do we go from here? Hope to check y'all out. Peace. Peace. One, two, three. Peace, love, and light to the family out there, to all the viewership. We're here on another episode of Black News 102, House of Consciousness, with my big brother, Sarnetta. As you can see, we have a very special treat for the people out there, as we always tend to. You know, here on this platform, we bring you know, scholars, you know, elders. Um, we bring teachers of various different schools of thought. But we also deal with the streets. You know what I'm saying? We got our ear to the streets. Therefore, we deal with the hip hop element because that is all inclusive of the culture of us as a people. So once again, we're doing it like we always do right here on Black News 102 with another esteemed legend, the God from brand Nubians who really needs no introduction before the people Lord Jamal the Lord the one of the one of the the God hip-hop you know what I'm saying consciousness the essence of that you know who is right before us today and I wanted to say that it is an honor and a privilege to once again to be in your presence to be able to conduct this powerful interview with you for the people so I kind of want to just go in with a little question and get to the little beaten potatoes of it all you know um you're like um you know you're you are like a forefather in the industry you know and it's very important that people know their roots you know for us here in america hip-hop is a part of our roots so delving in a little bit to your personal roots we want to know you know who were you before lord jamal well, first of all, peace, Sankofa. Yes, Thank sir. you uh, for having me back. Shout out, Sonetta. Um, Man, who was I before I was Lord Jamal? You know, I was 85. I was a, a savage, you know, in the pursuit of happiness. I was um, just out here, just like anybody, you know, any other lost young black man, you know, who doesn't fully understand the world and, and, and why things are the way they are, you know? And then fortunately I came into the knowledge of myself at a, uh, a young age, you know, around 14, 15 years old. So from then on, it's just been a, a, a steady path and progression of, you know, gaining knowledge and, um, you know, make a knowledge born. I love it. Right to the point. Malcolm X had a, a statement. He said, "Made it, make it plain. That was plain, but it was directly hard hitting and to the point, clear and concise. You know, um, so as I transition into the next question, you know, it kind of has a lot to deal with aspects of roots and as far as the hip hop culture goes. You know, during the time of Reaganomics, um, which was, um, you know, simultaneously around the time of the golden era, or the beginning of hip hop. You know, during that time, it was the free bass era. You know, New York City was hit hard with the crack era. Tell me um, how, if in any way, that era impacted you as a young black man out here in, in New York City around that time. Well, first of all, free bass and crack was two different things. You know, free bass was something that you know, they did back in the days in the 70s and all of that. And that was supposed to be like something fly. Like, you know, if you had money and all that, you might be free basing some cocaine. Um, and it wasn't as addictive as, you know, when the crack came out. Mm -hmm. 
So, you know, how did crack affect me? It affected me like, like a lot of people, you know. Um, unbeknownst to me, my father went from freebasing, you know, on some cool shit to smoking crack, you know, to where it took him, you know, but it didn't take him to the point where See, he was able to keep a job and shit like that, but it took him to the point where he wasn't really being around his kids and shit like mm -hmm. that. You know what I mean? There'd be times where I didn't see my pops for like two years or some shit, and then he'd just show up one day at the crib. Um, and later I found out it was because he didn't want us to see him like that. You know what I mean? Um, shout out to my pops. He's straight now. I love him and all that. Um... So that's one way it affected me. You know, it also affected me in the in the way of just wanting to be a part of it. You know what I mean? It, being enticed by it, you know? Um, and also, my generation went from thinking that cocaine was something fly. You know, let's keep it real. Like, even in the beginning of hip-hop, motherfuckers used to be at the party talking about, say cocaine! say blow you know what i mean like that was part of hip-hop so we used to be in the parties hundred dollar bill coke in it you know what i mean smoking coke cigarettes blowing it in broads faces you want them to know that you had coke because only the live motherfuckers had it you see but then it switched when then it switched to crack so now you got dudes that were smoking coke cigarettes casually mm -hmm. now they smoking woolas mm -hmm. but it's not casually no more you know what i mean not for a lot of people like you know it took a lot of people and you know i did everything that a nigga would have did back in the days you understand that a nigga would have did i i smoke weed i sniff coke i smoke dust you know what i mean i even sniff fucking heroin like twice in my life mm -hmm. you know what i mean so I'm just letting you know. But what saved me, because I had friends that ended up being crackheads and all that type of shit, but what saved me was having knowledge of self, mm -hmm. knowing that I am the master of all things and nothing can master me. Like just that knowledge in itself mm -hmm. made me never go overboard where others did. You know what I mean? So, so yeah, I fucked with it a little bit. You know what I mean? I sold it. I fucking did all kind of, you know. Crack affected us all in all different kind of ways. I robbed people that had it. You know what I mean? I did a lot of shit. <laughs> um, crack affected me. Yeah. Friends that, you know, went mm -hmm. from having money and being the man to fucking you can't believe it looking at this guy like are you serious like, like I used to be. but fast though like mm -hmm. two weeks ago he was the man yeah you know what i mean like Snapping shit things. like that yeah i done seen dudes catch sealed indictments all kind of shit like that you know niggas i was running with mm -hmm. where i was fortunate not to catch it so yeah crack affected me pretty much like it affected a lot of people you know in you know what I mean that mm. come up in this type of environment wow 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 so you know that kind of does lead me into my next question um because because it's pertaining to that area around that time frame now during the times of mayor um Giuliani Mayor David Dinkins, even before him, you know, New York City was a rough place, very tough time out here. And um, soldiers, the streets as a result, soldiers were produced. Soldiers like specifically Larry Davis, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Legendary Larry Davis. We wanted to know what was the climate of the city, how old were you one, and what was the climate of the city like during that time? In the Larry Davis era? Yeah. How old was I? Like 16, 17, something like that. Like Larry was the man. Like Larry had the bomber with the with the, the bubble bomber with the V. You know what I mean? Like that was new at the time. And to see him 
to see him on the news in the paper with that jacket on, that was hip hop in its own self. You know what I mean? It was like, oh shit, like a like a hip hop nigga bust at the police. Like you knew he was he was one of us. Like, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I was like 16, 17 around that time. Yeah, this was prime. You know what I mean? That was prime time hip hop shit. You know, and I was doing my thing and I was DJing and MCing and and just believing in my mind that someday I'm gonna be doing this shit myself. You mm. know? That's where I was at. Wow. Okay, here you go, brother. Um, how did you ever get exposed to Vlad TV? Did you contact him or he somehow said, oh, shit, there go Brother Lord Jamal. Let me get Brother Lord Jamal a call, call. How did you get exposed to that? Well, what, 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 what happened was um, this whole shit, you know, with Kanye West in the skirts and shit. This is how it all started. You know what I mean? I posted some shit on my Instagram, you know. Some 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 fashion show where they had a, a a brother wearing a skirt, but you could tell they was trying to put a hip hop edge to it, you know. And I was like, damn, this is that shit that Kanye put into the game, like you know. But I just posted that on my my Instagram, you know what I mean? Like, nigga, this is my world. I put what the fuck, you know, on my page what I want to put. So some some blog or something hit me up, and they're like, yo. Would you, you know, I saw that comment you said about Kanye. Would you like to do an interview about that? You know? So I was like, fuck it. You know? And so we did it. And then when the interview came out, I guess it started getting, you know, a slight little buzz. And so that's when Vlad had hit me up. You know, Vlad was like, yo, what's up? And I had already been watching his, you know, his channel and shit, seeing the video format and all of that. Um, so I, when he was like, yeah, will you come in and want to talk about that on, on video? Cause the, you know, the other shit was just over the phone and he wrote about it or some shit. You know what I mean? So this shit was like on camera. So I was like, fuck it. All right, let's do it. And then it just popped off from there. That, that one video got like, you know, yeah. 750,000 views, like, <laughs> like immediately like it was crazy you know and then did some other shit and, you know and then when i said the shit about the white people or guests in hip-hop you know simple shit that she you know i'm not thinking that none of this shit is like controversial like i'm just speaking my mind like but it but it turned out that damn near everything i said was fucking viral because so much lies and bullshit is out here that when you hear the truth and you hear it delivered to you in a certain way, you know, it's just very magnetic and it just causes a, a, a spark. And, you know, and some people at first it caused an outrage in them and, you know, but over time, you know, the truth is undisputed. First of all, you know, I'm 48 years old and the way they try to you know, inject ageism and shit into this hip hop. Mm -hmm. I could make the hottest album right now, but they're not gonna necessarily play it on the radio right. and in the clubs and all of that. People, my peers might find out about it and be like, yo, that shit is hot. Like KRS got an album out right now that's banging. <clears throat> Fucking banging. It's called um, The World Is Mind. Yo. And I'm telling you, from beginning to end, this shit is banging. Mm. Like the production, the rhymes. I'm thinking, yo, this motherfucker been out since the 80s. And to put an album out of this quality is crazy. But nobody really knows about it. Y'all is in the conscious community and didn't even, even didn't even hear about right. that. Okay, Coogee Rap got an album right out, out right now that I didn't hear yet, but I heard that shit is banging. You know what I mean? But they're not going to play that on the radio and, 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 and or you know videos and shit like that so how do you get to the people how do you talk to the people now you see them saying they done made it easier for me actually this internet shit has made it to where i don't have to confine myself within 16 bars 
I don't have to make it rhyme. <laughs> I could just say what I want to say in the way that I want to say it, and either you're going to fuck with it or you not. not. But I found a way, you see, to deliver the shit that I want to say in a way that's magnetic. Mm. Because I'm not in here trying to be, you know, Oscar the Grouch and all right, all right, black people. Hey, relax. Oh, <laughs> Yo. Oh, 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 he going out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, this mother. Me, Yo, you should have saw your face. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you had me scared. I thought he was coming at me for a minute. Nah, he talked right to you, son. Right, man. That's <laughs> funny. I was shook, son. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to leave that on the table. Leave that on. <laughs> oh, shit. Say, Damn, Don't say the word grouch. Right? But nah, they didn't see your face. They're going to see your face through my face. Right. <laughs> but did you thought he was coming at me? Or you knew? I mean, I didn't think he was, but then I saw him going that direction, so I don't know what you could have did. But then I heard a noise outside, so. Oh, oh. oh. Sometimes, tell me if this affects the shot. No. No, we good. Because when they see people walk past and shit like that, yeah. that's what makes them bug out. Man, that shit had me like, yo, what the hell? That's on point. <laughs> God dog is an understatement. <laughs> so where were, where were we? I forgot. <laughs> oh, we were talking about... Oh, um, yeah. Does it... Um, oh, know, relevance. Yes, point, yes. Yes, okay. So... You know, the fact that I don't even have to rhyme, that I could just, and not be the grouchy guy, you know, I've actually, I just use my personality. And motherfuckers be like, yo, Lord Jamar, you mad, hilarious, but you be dropping science. Mm -hmm. That's a science. You see? That's a, that's a science of teaching. Like, like, who wants to learn from somebody that's always yelling at them? And black man, you need to do this. And then and then that. See, I don't talk like that. They'd rather go to church. I'll I'll show you the absurdity <laughs> and the and the humor mm. in the bullshit that's going on out here. Mm. You see, and that's I believe is more effective than yelling at people and you know trying to act so fucking militant all the time because that's not real we don't all we're not all yes. angry all the time mm -hmm. first of all anger is anger is not a good emotion it's not a good vibration you know i think we've our frame of reference is to see how you know our leaders and elders from back in the days would speak and now we're mimicking the way that they talk you know but even Farrakhan at his fire, at, you know, in his most fiery moments, he'll get to that point where he just smiles. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And he delivers jokes during his, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because you have to have a balance. It can't all be, you know what I mean? Now, of course, sometimes I get, you know, like, fuck that. You bugging. You know what I mean? But you have to have a balance. You have to have a balance. And so I'm, I'm grateful to this internet thing that it allows me to just touch people, you know, millions of people. Look, I didn't even have to go nowhere. Y'all came to me. You know what I mean? And right now, this is going to disseminate out to millions of people. Like, when I said that shit about Kanye West, I said it from right here in my crib. I ended up making a song about it called Lift Up Your Skirt right here. Put it on the internet and within days this motherfucker asked to have all the pictures of him in a skirt taken down off Kanye? yes off the he biggest no off the biggest um oh i see what you're saying right off the biggest place that disseminates pictures mm. you know what i mean mm. now like I was able to whether he admits it or not i was able to tap kanye on the shoulder right from my from my crib yeah right from my rest wow. right from my kingdom and say yo kanye you bugging with that mm -hmm. skirt shit and he heard me mm. through this internet oh, shit <laughs> you know what i mean and so and a lot and, and now if you notice that skirt shit that shit has gone down like you don't see as many motherfuckers in skirts and shit mm. and i believe it's because motherfuckers like me spoke up that's right you see and 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 didn't just let it happen 
If I just sit back and just let motherfuckers start wearing, I bet you mad people be wearing them right now. Yeah. Now they're trying to come with these rompers for men. <laughs> but people's clowning it because I've created an atmosphere for that to be clowned. Right. You see, that could have been a good follow-up to the skirts and shit mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. You see? So this internet enables you to go mainstream without being mainstream. It, ab it enables you to act like you on the radio without necessarily having the backing of, of a corporate radio entity or structure, you know? And although Vlad is plugged into like corporate type of shit, you know, uh, complex and shit like that, um, it's not like, you know, clear channel or some shit like that, you know? So yeah. It's this, 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 you know, it's a good thing right now. Wow. Okay, so, you know, me, I'm in my 40s, early, thir or early, early 40s, excuse me. And, you know, as far as I can remember back, man, you always, y'all always had that prolific message in the music. I mean, it was raw, a lot of strong content, lyrically, proficient, hot beats, but a lot of people were inspired. To, to study the lessons 120 lessons of God and earth through hearing people like there were other course other gods in the industry But y'all kind of brought it out on another level as far as kind of teaching it and making it Palatable and and, and you know bop worthy mm -hmm. to the people so to speak So you were God and studying the lesson 120 lessons, okay? Mm -hmm. For as long as I can remember okay for when y'all came out in your inception mm -hmm. So my question is what? What inspired brother Lord Jamal? to get enlightened what was your inspiration wow well see you know it's never one thing mm -hmm. you know it's a series of things um so coming up let, let me i gotta go all the way back <laughs> like coming up my mother our my first remembrance of any kind of religion was my mother taking me to some sunday school Okay, it was at some church and just the church looked spooky to me and I didn't like the way it smelled in there and But it was like all right you go downstairs with the kids and they're upstairs and mm -hmm. I, I was like the fuck is this like it just seemed like one day we was just going to that mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I'm very young So she didn't stick with that church She ended up turning and, and becoming a Jehovah's Witness mm -hmm. Now that's the shit I was brought up in Okay, it's Jehovah Witness shit. Okay, and where I came up at, you know, it was so beautiful because I was able to see the racism in that religion from an early age. Reason being, we lived in New Rochelle, but now there was, so they had a kingdom hall, but they had to share it with another congregation and that congregation was from Scarsdale. Now if anybody knows what Scarsdale or where Scarsdale is, Scarsdale is like super rich, super white. Mm. Okay? Wow. So I'm thinking I right, the, the, the 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 Kingdom Hall is not big enough for these two towns. I get it. So one day but there's a lot of black people that go to the nurse shell, but there's white, a lot of white people in it too. But there's more black people in the nurse shell congregation. But all the people that really run the nurse shell congregation are still white. Mm -hmm. And I'm noticing that too, <laughs> as a young man. So now, one day, so they, they'd flip it where the nurse shell would go in the morning for a couple of years, Scarsdale go in the afternoon, then they'd flip it, you know, few years Scarsdale now goes in the morning your shell goes in the afternoon so whatever we missed our morning shit one time with my mom so my mom was like oh well you know we'll just go to the Scarsdale one in the afternoon you know what I mean that wasn't her congregation but she's figuring they all Jehovah witnesses and I just remember when we got up in there yeah, it was whiter than white. And the way that they looked at us <laughs> like, what the fuck are y'all doing here? Mm -hmm. Like, don't you know your shit is like you come in the morning? You know what I mean? <laughs> and I was like, 
Wow. This is some ill shit right here. Message. So it's little shit like that. Little shit like, you know, my mother be like, they had some shit like a communion type of thing. And they be like, yeah, some of the 144,000. This is going to be like one or two of them here tonight. And I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and they always would be like some white people. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? So like 144,000 is supposed to be like they're going to when they die, they're going to definitely be angels. This is the shit that they they sell to these people. None of this shit sat with me <laughs> at coming up. Mm -hmm. None of this shit sat right with me. And I'm talking as a child, I'm talking seven, eight years old. Wow. This shit is not sitting right with me, wow. you know? <laughs> I'm seeing the science like, wait a minute, they over there, like, why, how could all these people be white? It's just all of this shit don't make sense to me, mm -hmm. all right? And to top it off, me and my brothers, because I'm the oldest of, you know, it's three of us. Me and my brothers was probably the worst Jehovah Witness kids that ever existed. <laughs> like, we was in there wilding. I mean, blatantly falling asleep. Like, we damn near in the front row, and we just... <laughs> snoring and mother is waking us up i'm fucking i shot and stole shit out of there microphones <laughs> all kind of shit yeah like 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 i yo we was wow like when they used to have these assemblies up in monroe new york we used to be fucking taking off running out in the woods smoking fuck well i was smoking they was a little too young for that but we used to be just running around just doing all crazy shit like like just wow and um yeah they didn't really like us but my mother was so devoted that i you know i guess they was conflicted about it so anyway so finally you know i get old enough to where i'm like i'm not fucking with that i'm not going to no fucking oh yeah plus my moms didn't have a ride like my moms didn't have a car <laughs> so a lot of times we used to have to get rides and shit so she used to like split up the ride sometimes she got a ride with these people and then send us to go send us to go meet sister such and such on the corner to get a ride so me and my brother wise would be like we not going to that shit today we fucking go act like we walked to the corner but we never did we fucking went and hid some fucking where and then <laughs> them people's waiting up for us for like 45 minutes we never fucking come then they go there and tell my moms but she's too late you know they didn't have cell phones and shit back then so it's not like you can call and be like what the fuck is you know what i mean she get back and be mad but hey it is what it is so finally when i was old enough to be like i'm never going to this shit no more you know this is this is hip hop is popping and all this type of shit. And I remember I'm DJing. I'm at my I'm at my man's crib and his grandfather was over there. And his grandfather was a Hebrew Israelite. Mm -hmm. Okay, now this is where it all starts. <laughs> but see, it really started from me not fucking with this Jehovah Witness shit. That's why I had to tell you all of that shit. But so this guy's a hip Hebrew Israelite. He got the studs down, his jeans and all this shit, right? <laughs> so, he's saying shit, basically, did you know that Jesus was black? You know what I mean? Like did you know the black man is God? Shit like that. Mm -hmm. And so he started pulling out books and showing us like archival, like, like ancient pictures where Jesus is depicted as black. You know what I mean? Soon as I seen that shit, I was like, I know it. I know it. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you know, tell me more. And then, yo, so like, damn near the whole night when I stubbed, stayed over, yo, he's just telling us mad shit. No, matter of fact, it was in the morning and shit. When we woke up, he was telling us this shit. But I was just like, wow, that's deep. So I just took that. And now it's in my, it's now it's in my brain. So now I meet. A brother named Ba Kim. Okay, Ba Kim just came home from doing I don't know how many years up north. But oddly enough, he was a security guard in the mall. <laughs> Why a brother who just came home from up north was a security guard in the mall? But whatever. So this is a strong, this is a strong, you know what I mean? 
but light skinned brother, like understand and see, very like Farrakhan looking, you know, had that type of hair and all of that, the waves to the side and all, you know what I mean? But but strong, you know? So he was a guard in the mall and he used to like, I guess, check out certain brothers and he'd run up on certain brothers and be like, yo, young brother, did you know the black man is God? Did you know you God? You know, long at that point on some, you know, an OI type of shit. So he ends up inviting me to the mosque and all this type of shit, you know? But then when we go, he got a suit on, you know. Mm. I got regular street shit on, you know what I mean? Like, I'm mm -hmm. feeling bad about that a little bit, you know. We get there, they're passing the collection plate around a lot, you know. I'm like, damn, I, you know. Almost feel like I'm back in the Kingdom Hall with this portion of it. But the shit that they saying is proper, you know? So long story short, I was like, I like the knowledge, you know, and all of that. But I'm not fucking with, I'm too young to be putting on suits in my mind. I'm still a street dude. I still want to smoke weed. I still want to do that. But the shit y'all saying is great. But I'm not ready to fucking be a, a Muslim. You know what I mean? In my mind. So whatever. I took that knowledge. I still see Bakim here and there, but I wasn't going into the mosque and that type of shit no more. <clears throat> but I think I started slowing down on swine and shit like that at that point. And you know what I mean? So now a little more time goes on. Not too much, but a little more time goes on. Now it's crazy because hip-hop always got something to do with this shit. This is when hip-hop and knowledge really came together for me a brother from hollis queens mm -hmm. named true king of law ends up moving from hollis to nourishelle like right across the street from where i rested at mm -hmm. now he was like an mc dj you know jamaican chatting type of dude but he was god you know what i mean Matter of fact, he was a character. Like, he used to do karate, all kind of crazy, you know, <laughs> Bruce Lee type of shit, nunchucks. He was an ill character. Dark skin, knowledge seed, brother. So, he come around. We start vibing on some hip-hop shit, you know. He find out I got turntables and all that. He come, you know, we got introduced. He come to the crib, and we doing our thing on some hip-hop shit. And so now he trying to do his duty and start telling me, little shit about the black man's god and all you know but i'm like yo i already know that like you know i'm telling him the shit that i know and he's like yo you already got now yo you got some knowledge you know what i mean you need to stop playing and just go ahead and you know what i mean do to do you know and i was like you know what i think i am ready to stop playing you know what i mean and so he became my enlightener Lord Jamal was born. Wow. And, but, and then from the inception, because another part of the knowledge that, that I forgot, another piece came from, which was hip-hop, was from the world-famous Supreme Team. Okay? The world-famous Supreme Team had a radio show on WHBI back in the days that came on like once a week, you know, one in the morning or some shit like that. Now, they were God. Now, they would be infusing <clears throat> certain righteous lyrics in their music. But at the time, I didn't know what the fuck they was talking about. I just liked their shit. I just <laughs> thought I just thought this was dope hip-hop, and this was their routines and all of that type of shit. So, when I start getting knowledge with true king and he starts giving me the mathematics and the alphabets i'm like wait a minute this the shit supreme team was saying i already know this mm -hmm. the knowledge is the foundation the wisdom is the way to understand oh shit and that's when the light went off for me i said these motherfuckers taught me they planted a seed Without me even realizing, and when it was time for that seed to grow, the fruit came and I realized what they did. I said, oh, that shit is science. That's master teaching in itself. I said, I want to do that. I want to fucking, but I want to take it even deeper. I want to put actual lessons in these, 
in these rhymes and shit like that and give it to people and maybe they're not going to know what it is at first but at some point they will and when that light bulb goes on when that knowledge is born mm. it's gonna come all back to knowledge you know what i mean knowledge the born born back to knowledge and phew, yeah that's that's where it all started for me a lot of people destroyed their life but a lot of people it did save their life because right. it kept them away from some shit that could have been really destructive to them mm -hmm. you know what i mean and it it gave you a chance to sit your ass down and right and think, think. Uh huh. What you you did the knowledge before the wisdom instead of wisdom knowledge, which got a lot of people fucked up. Yeah. Before I go into my next question, I just uh, it's funny because, and that's ill because you know this is my brother, man, big brother right here, I knew him for many years, and I know he came into knowledge through the through the nation of gods and earth or whatever nation of Islam teaching. But I'm just trying to picture you in prison with the bow tie on because I know oh, you now. So yeah. now I'm, you know, I got a vivid imagination. So I'm picturing with you. With the Mars number seven. With the Yeah, you was like, now you remember Don't Be a Menace in South Central by drinking your You wasn't, you didn't have the bow tie like him on, right? Like Swine, my brother. Was it like Swine, my brother? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I discovered bean pies. I said, oh, it's just delicious. Bean pies? Yeah. <laughs> God damn. I was like, yeah, I could fuck with the bean pies. And, and me too, too, because I thought it was a bean pie. It didn't sound appealing to me when I said, no, I said, like, beans? It, I thought like, pie's supposed to be sweet. Apple pie, cherry pie. You know what I mean? Peach co bean pie. pie. You think it's going to taste like beans or something, right? And then, and then yeah, Bakim's the one that turned me on to the bean pies. And I said, oh, man. This brother, he's on to something here. <laughs> Hey, and bean pies are very delicious. If you haven't tried any, for the people out there who haven't tried none, try a bean pie. A bean pie in a long motherfucking time. I can go for a goddamn bean pie. Yeah, they out there all, every day. My brother Joe on 127th Street, right on the corner of Mars Number Seven. Well, uh, for your 49th birthday, I might bring you a bean pie with a candle in it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so going, um, you know, back into the interview. Um, my next question is this, man. Very. Um, um, that was a very deep story about how you came in right. um, to the knowledge, you know, but many people came into the knowledge and they came through different ways. But at the root of that, at the root of that was Father Allah, Clarence 13X. And for those viewing this who may not know who he is, he was the founder or the leader of um, the original nation of gods and earths or the five percenters, you know, and he was very passionate um, an Advent uh, teacher, passionate teacher, okay, who championed the cause of reaching out to the youth in the community and bringing them specifically, specifically and bringing them the knowledge of the of the lessons, student enrollment, all that, and and the mathematics added to it. He brought that to the youth, and the youth he would bring it to. Um, wasn't kids in parochial school per se. He would bring it to the youth that was in the basketball courts, in the shoot galleries, mm -hmm. and uh, the bars, and in the dice games. And he had a way to reach out to the youth and teach them that the Asiatic black man is God, the maker, the owner, cream of the planet Earth, father of a civilization, God of the universe. My question to you, brother, is. Do you believe in your humble opinion that the nation of gods and earth has gone in the direction that he may have wanted to do it to go um, prior to his passing? Oh, uh, hmm. That's a good question. I'd say yes and no, you know. Um... I'm sure we all, you know, we all envision, you know, grandiose things for our children and wish the best for them and hope that they grow up to, you know, have mansions or whatever the case may be. You understand what I'm saying? And kingdoms. Um, that doesn't always turn out to be such, you know, for everybody, for all the children. Um, yet he has many children that have, did, have done many great things, you know. But do I, th do I think the father, you know, when we got our first building from Mayor Lindsay back in the days, you know, did he probably envision that we'd have more 
you know, within a few years, probably, you know. But the fact that we still have that building and that building's even in jeopardy right now is, you know, that, that could be a disappointment to the God if he was here right now. Mm. But at the same time, you know, for him to see people like, let's take a RZA, you know, <laughs> who has transcended and rose on so many levels, you know what I mean? Um, and just really all the gods that, that, especially in hip hop, that have been able to make knowledge born on a worldwide level, you know, I think he'd be super proud of that. And, and maybe that might have been beyond what he foresaw, mm. you know, that would act, that it would actually proliferate in a worldwide fashion. Because wow. I've been all over the world, and I could f safely say that damn near everywhere I went, somebody was like Peace God. Mm. Somebody was there. The gods was there. Allah is seen and heard everywhere, literally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, motherfuckers, that was God that was in the, the military and shit. You understand what I'm saying? So I've been to like Germany and shit. Peace, God. Yeah, what you doing out here? Oh, I'm in the military or whatever the case may be. But. That's deep. Yeah. <laughs> That's deep. Yeah. That's deep. Wow. Um, bring me to my next question now. Now, the gods are some of the most prolific speakers, critical thinkers. Writers. Got the best the writers, of course, um, have some of the most sharpest vernacular. I mean, they inspired me when I was young, and I used to be trying to test my intellectual sword with them. I was like, I have to step it up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Real talk. Um, and these gods, one thing that I noticed that they exhibited was a lot of passion. A lot of passion over the knowledge and them lessons that they were so prolific in conveying. Some, to the point where they were so passionate that it would lead to altercations or fights. Right. They saying some, you know, uh, the guards, especially the Brooklyn guards, you know, in Medina, as they would refer to it, was no joke. You know what I'm saying? Altercations, beat downs, if you didn't know the lessons. Have you ever experienced, you know what I'm saying, any of those kind of altercations, you know, between the guards and their passion over the knowledge? I mean, <clears throat> me and my guards, we was the ones around our way causing altercations okay <laughs> over this knowledge like 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 see i never personally caught any universals mm. for not knowing my lessons because quite honestly at the time i knew what it was mm. like the the threat of violence had me on point <laughs> i'm not gonna lie it had me on point i remember i've told the story before but i'll tell it again there's a god his name is k born he's still out here peace god you know he had knowledge he was a little bit older than me and he had knowledge you know before me and so i remember when i first got knowledge you know i'm proud and walking around. i got my crown on or whatever and it and it, um you know, he's like, peace, God. You know, and you know, how you see, you know, how you see today's degree, da 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 And I'm like, oh, God, I'm a little stimulated right now. Like, you know, so? You know what I mean? Like, yo, God, you master, you know, and right then, you master everything and don't nothing master you. You know what I mean? Ain't no excuses. And you could, you know, and this motherfucker, he was diesel at the time. So you didn't want it. What? <laughs> you didn't want it. Next time I see you, you better know, you know what I mean? <laughs> you got it. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm not going to be that one. Mm. I'm not going to be that one. And I actually do love this. So I understand, like, you know, the gods felt like, yo, you got to take this shit. If you don't take this shit seriously the way I take it seriously, Get the fuck out of here. That's right. That's the attitude. You know what I mean? That it was. And so, me and my crew ended up seeing 
because we was like some of the first gods of our age to get knowledge mm. and nourish up, right? But at the same time, we was the cool guys. Mm -hmm. We was the motherfuckers you want to be around. So now all of a sudden you see certain motherfuckers that want to get knowledge just so they could come amongst us. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? And feel like they live. And, you know what I mean? Part of something. But, but I used to spot that from a mile away. Mm. And those type of motherfuckers used to piss me off. I, they not serious about this. Mm. They don't really, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They don't really love black people. But I seen that motherfucker eating a ham sandwich. You know what I mean? Just a week ago. You know what I mean? Nice. So these motherfuckers, when they wouldn't know they shit, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I would be specifically pressing these motherfuckers. Mm. Waiting for them to fuck up. Come on. Let's go. We used to be walking motherfuckers down to the park. You know what I mean? It was like a fucking death march almost. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you used to have two, three, that's my word, two, three motherfuckers. They know what's going to happen too. And don't you dare fucking run. Don't you dare run. They wasn't playing. What? No, we wasn't playing. Y'all wasn't playing. Yeah, like I remember walking one kid damn near right past his crib. I know he was looking like, damn, if I just run right here, I could run to my motherfucker. You better not fucking run because I'm going to fucking catch you and it's going to be worse. Handle this shit like a man. Yeah, so we used to fucking take these motherfuckers to the park. Whoop their ass. You know what I mean? But it made them sharper too. You see what I'm saying? And it weeded out some of the weak ones. Like, you know what I mean? Like, y'all don't want that. You know what I mean? It doesn't really, you know what I mean? Matter that much. Do you really want to get your ass whipped just so you can hang out with us? I don't think so. Get the fuck out of here. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, wow. But yeah. You know, but then some people would abuse it, though. Mm hmm. Some people would honestly abuse it. Yeah, they would just, well, they would just, you know. I know gods that would do it just to fucking rob somebody. Mm. Just come up with the excuse of, yo, how you show and prove that, that chain you got on, God? How you show and prove this wow. watch? Wow. You know what I mean? Have a mother all flustered. Give me that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Take your crown, your jewels, all of that. Like, mm. you know, that's not what it's about, but that did happen too. You know, not by me, but I know people that did shit like that. Mm. You know, yeah. Okay. Now, shout out to Nori. Now, Nori, you know what I'm saying? He had, in one of his rhymes, where he said something to like the extent of how gods, how they go in, God body, go in specifically talking about going into jail, mm -hmm. and they come out blood. Mm. Now, you know, you've seen that going on a lot at a certain point, mm -hmm. you know, probably still is. Um, do you know any other gods who were caught up in that kind of thing, going to jail as, you know what I'm saying, God body, and then coming out as blood? Um, I don't know any personal, like any of my people that did that, but I've heard of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I've heard of it, probably acquaintances that I might know. Might have done it. I don't, you know what I mean? I can't think of any people offhand, but you know. Hey, that just shows, you know, like, mm -hmm. see, because some people, see, because the gods were strong in, in, in jail at one point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, so yeah. some people became God because that was the strong thing to be with, you see? And it was like. Can you fully blame them? I don't know. That's not the that's not the reason I feel you should get knowledge, though. Mm -hmm. It's for protection and all of that type of shit, you know? And those were, like I said, were the type of people that I was hard on. Mm -hmm. I want you to get the knowledge for the love of black people, for the love of wanting to, you know what I mean, better yourself and truly understand, you know, everything in life. That being said, um... Damn, what was the original that we was just saying before that? Um, you're talking about the, the people. The blood. Oh, yeah, the blood shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the gods was the ones with the strength. Once the bloods became the ones in jail mm -hmm. that had the power and all of that type of shit, you know, you got brothers that, 
you know, might have got knowledge outside in the world. You see what I'm saying? And now they go in and now they feel like the way for them to survive inside is to become a blood, you know? So, you know, I don't know. That's something that, you know, every man has to make their choice mm -hmm. and they have to deal with the ramifications of their choices, you know? And they have to analyze what their choices say about them, you know, mm -hmm. as, as men and human beings, you know? Mm. You got to stand on your square sometimes. And, and a lot of times, you know, it's your square. You got to stand on, your, on it alone sometimes, you know? Mm. So if everybody's doing one thing, sometimes you got to just do your thing, you know? But it's harder sometimes to do that. And some people don't want to go through that, you see? So they'd rather just go with the flow. Mm. You know, so I think that's where that comes from, you know, but I can't judge them for that. They, they, you know, they're going to judge themselves, mm. you know. Wow. Yeah. And um, sidebar, I'm sure that there were a lot of brothers who went into jail blood and came out God body because mm. oh, no. there's always a flip side to Absolutely. a coin. OK. Absolutely. Um, wow. And that makes me think about, you know, uh, an, another question. Um, you know, since uh, the RICO laws were set up, um, New York has some of the, um, the strictest gun laws in the country. You know, unlike the South, who, you know, has a lot more um, lighter gun, gun laws, you know. What do you think the um, reason or the motivation behind that is as to why New York City is targeting uh, you know, has that kind of gun law set up and, you know, in the Department of Corrections, like, you know, because, you know, that's where you definitely end up <laughs> as a rush. So I want you to know, in, in your, uh, from your perspective, you know, the gun laws in New York being some of the worst in the country. Um, and, you know, why is that so? I mean, I would think it has to do with, you know, trying to protect their property and their wealth you know there's a lot of property and wealth in in this new york region mm -hmm. you know and if people were able to just arm up and go where the money is at and take it it would be a problem you know so let's make sure that the mass majority of people are not you know yeah armed like that that way we can deal with the the rest of the you know the rest of the motherfuckers that are you know but to know that the whole you know population had a had the potential to just protect themselves mm -hmm. or you know flip flip out and 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 mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm destroy property or take property or whatever the case may be you know businesses and shit like that run up in gucci and just you know do whatever they want before the police get there they they you know they don't want that so i think that's a deterrent to stuff like that mm. yeah because it's not about saving people's lives they don't care about that they don't care about that. They'll act like it's to save you and me, but it's not. It's to save, protect and to serve properties and corporations and, you know, the businesses and shit like that. That's what the police are there to protect. When shit gets wild, you know what I mean? They're going to stand in front of certain places mm -hmm. and be like, don't fuck with this. That's right. You know what I mean? Which makes sense, being that New York is the center of uh, capitalism, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, and commerce, trade, and all that in the United States, one of the biggest in the world. So, you know, and on the police cruiser, it should say, instead of saying, because it says on the New York police, NYPD cruiser, to protect and serve. That is their motto. It should say to protect property, to protect property 
and to serve warrants. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just my opinion. Okay, so now I want to talk hip hop. Okay, we want to go into hip hop a little bit again. All right, brand Nubian. Okay, the gods. You know what I'm saying? Some refer to him as the Trinity. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe some may look at it as the original Three Amigos of hip hop. You know? I wanted to know Lord Jamal, Sadat X, Grand Booba, shout out to you brothers, even Alamo. How you guys came together, how you formed, how did Brand Nubians come together? Well, we all grew up in Nourishell. Mm -hmm. X and Alamo, their fathers grew up together, so they already was connected from birth. Me and Poobah met. I mean, New Rochelle's not that big. You're gonna end up gonna you're gonna end up meeting the motherfuckers if you travel in certain circles. Poobah was a little older than us though, but he was like a New Rochelle legend already. Mm. So, you know. Whatever. I had met him through some on some through some DJ shit. We ended up getting cool. He ended up starting to work with me as a solo artist. Then he met Sadat. He started working with Sadat as a solo artist too. He was in his group mass ceremonies at that time. They broke up. When they broke up, we said, yo, why don't we just come together as a group? And that's, <clears throat> that's how it happened. Mm. Okay, now, that's what's up. Now, see, y'all was in a time, you know what I'm saying? A powerful time for me, you know, that I can recall. It was a time when, you know, conscious hip-hop uh, was rocking African medallions and, you know what I'm saying? People, you know, African consciousness and dancing was, was prevalent and dancing to revolutionary hip-hop and bopping your head to, you know, revolutionary hip-hop music was something that was the norm at that time. And, you know, how much is that missed? Wearing the beads, all of that, red, black, and green, African medallion. Um, how much of that is missed, would you say? Your opinion. I mean, a whole lot of it is missed. I mean, <clears throat> Harlem, I remember <laughs> 125th was just a magical place back in the days. Mark 125, oh, that was like a crowning jewel of... Mm -hmm consciousness at the time you know for for just conscious black people to have their own mall was just a big thing and i used to just make it a point to try to go in there and support as much businesses as possible mm. back then <clears throat> um damn what was the original thing you said <laughs> How much of that is missed? Oh, yeah, see? You know, cause I got so much into the thought of the time right, that I, like, wow. It is crazily missed. Like, just the whole energy. Specifically. This is what I'm saying. It is crazily missed by okay. me, specifically. That's why I'm sitting here thinking about, damn, I remember going to <clears throat> Mark 125 and I used to have the food upstairs and you know you go downstairs and get you a leather or they got my man with the tapes and the movies my man with the light eyes with the movies and shit fucking they had jewelry in there oh yeah i mean it was just just a beautiful time like even brooklyn at that time was uh, <clears throat> it was just a lot of African, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Love and African pride. And just yeah. Mm. Just a, it was it was it was going in a good direction. You know? And then came NWA. Then came the gangster, you know. Gangster, gangster, that's what they because I'm not going to lie, we used to we used to sit back and chuckle a little bit. We used to be like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. these devils is paying us money 
to get on the record and call them devils. I was like, this is great. <laughs> I was like, they don't even really know what we saying. Like, 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 obviously. Or the devil is so greedy that he don't give a fuck. Like, you could talk shit about him, but as long as he's making money off it, he don't give a fuck what you're saying about him. Mm -hmm. Call me the devil. I don't care. I'm raking in this dough. Mm -hmm. But now, but he knows a piece of him does care, but he's just ignoring it mm -hmm. because he's making money. So now, if you have the chance to not have somebody talk shit about you and make money, that's even better, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, if you was making money all, the, all this time off of me, but every time you had to hear that, yo, Sankofa's a piece of shit, he be robbing motherfuckers, he be killing babies, all this, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But now, you got another motherfucker you could interview. Mm. <laughs> you got another motherfucker who, not, who just gives nothing but praise for Sankofa, mm. okay? And he's just... You know what I mean? Gotcha. But you're making more money off with this guy, actually. Mm. Who you gonna rock with? You know what I mean? Who you gonna rock with? Mm -hmm. And that's that's what happened. I think the devil either either was it was strategically planned or he stumbled upon it. Mm. when groups like NWA came out and were so successful. They said, wait a minute, look at this. Mm. Hold up. Look at that over there. Mm -hmm. I know public enemy is big, but look at these guys. And they're saying the exact opposite. If we support this type of shit, you see? Because let's not always, you know, the devil's not very creative, first of all. I think sometimes we give the devil more credit than he's due. You understand? I mean, he is a crafty motherfucker, but don't get us wrong. But <clears throat> we taught him to do his devilish man. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like he's a very good copier because he's a copy. Mm -hmm. You see? He's the, <laughs> <coughs> he's the carbon copy. Mm -hmm. This is why <coughs> he copies a lot of shit. His music is... You know, these movies. Look at all these new movies coming out. They're all repeats off of some old shit. Because mm -hmm. they have no new ideas. And when it is a new idea, it's a young black motherfucker with something like Get Out. That they never thought of to do some shit like that. Like. <clears throat> so... Yeah, I think that's what happened. I think they stumbled on it and they said, this is much better. Mm -hmm. And we can direct them. We could direct, we can make more money and we could direct the message and we don't have to hear all that black shit anymore. <laughs> we don't have to hear all that black mumbo jumbo shit anymore. All that fucking kente cloth. I don't have to see that shit anymore. Fucking black niggers. <laughs> I love this brother, man. <laughs> now, I'm going to keep it real, right? Um, punks jump up to get beat down. Mm -hmm. Ill track. I mean, one of my favorites. I mean, y'all have a whole bunch of, a lot of my favorites, you know? That was just one of my many favorites from you guys. Um, you know, it was a, a type of, you know, a, a type of track that it was a party song. But at, even though it was a party song, you all were dropping some vivid jewels in that party track, right? And as a result, you know, a lot of people, it got a lot of parties shut down. You know, that's a song to get you riled up and hype. Especially Last Call for Drinks. <laughs> that song come up, punks jump up to get beat down. I got a right to be hostile. You know what I mean? Now that wasn't the intention when we made it. Okay, I wanna know, do you think that, cause y'all were dropping jewels over that, it wasn't the intention cause y'all dropped jewels in it, that was part, you know. Do you think that that may have went over some people's head, the jewels that were dropped in that hot track that was a party song with the jewels in it? Do you think the gems were a little bit over some of the people's head at that time? I mean, 
that's always going to happen. Like, you know, it all, you know, it all depends on the understanding of the listener. Mm. You see, not every listener is at the same educational level. So certain things will go over the heads of some people and other people will catch it all. You know, it all depends on, like I said, their education level. Punk Jump Up, though, wasn't a song that we made where we were thinking, like, we want black people to be fighting each other to this song, you know. Um, yeah. It was just like, you know. It was just some shit how we felt inside at the time, you know what I mean, about certain situations. But, you know, we didn't necessarily realize the type the type of response it would have you know what i mean mm -hmm. and trust me we've seen it multiple times like mm -hmm. with that fucking song right there it seemed like motherfuckers would wait through the whole party mm -hmm. wait for that shit to come on like they had a grudge with a motherfucker though, but they, the whole time but they waited and once that shit come on boom 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 motherfuckers just start wailing on a motherfucker like it was all planned like we gonna go to shit tonight and when punction pop come on we gonna whoop his ass you know what i mean <laughs> like that's gonna be the cue like and yo that shit used to happen a lot but we wasn't looking for that now slow down slow down what i am is what i am hot track you know what i'm saying heavy rotation i mean the beat was phenomenal the sample the backdrop to that trap to that track was perfect it was like a perfect marriage with the sample and the backdrop along with the science and the gems that were being dropped in that track i want to know, you know i mean who produced that track i mean that was a hot track who produced that we all produced it <clears throat> sadat x came with the um with the loop with the Edie Brickell record. We sampled that up. Now we're trying to find some drums to go with it. You know what I mean? It was just a group effort. Like, we're just trial and error. Nah, not those drums. It's not sounding right. Finally, boom. I forget. I think maybe Poobah had the record that found those drums. Now we're looking for horns and, you know, little things to add and that's how we used to work at that time. But none of us was really touching any buttons. We were just telling the engineer what we want, like, you know. So we just bring records and just be like, loop that from there and chop that there and you know what I mean? Shit like that. Yeah, but that's how that that's how we made that. Okay. So I wanted to know, um, brand Nubians, you know what I mean, one of the hottest trios and hip hop history. Um, you know, you, Lord Jamal, Sadat X, Brand Pooba, and you also had um, uh, Alamo, DJ Alamo. Um, you know, I asked what brought y'all together initially, how y'all came. This question um, is, you know, we seen, um, how did y'all break up? We seen Pooba um, go solo at first. There's Sadat X um, and cured some things and eventually went solo. Wanted to know what caused or led to the breakup of Brand Nubian. And do y'all plan on a reunion? First of all, we've been reunited. We've been back, get back together since like 96. <clears throat> but, um, I mean, long story short, Kuba's a little older than me and Sadat. So I think there's there's that there's that transitional phase from when your little homies are just your homies. You see? Like your little homies at some time, at some point become your equals. But when is that point exactly? Nobody knows. You know what I mean? Like in my mind, it's at this point. In your mind, it might be at a different point, you see? And so, I don't think those two things 
jived and it you know early on mm. i think pooba still looked at us as the little homies you know and <clears throat> tried to treat us as such you know but in my mind i'm not the little homie no more you know what i mean we don't made this group together and we all equals and you know what i mean we grown we grown up now you know what i mean i'm not that same you know so i i think it was just some of that you know just growing pains that's all you know combined with just you know we live we live in you know we deal with ego in these bodies you see so sometimes our lower selves gets the better of all of us, you know? And I think we all were guilty of some of that too. That's it. Mm. And later it took putting egos to the side, dealing with higher selves, mm -hmm. dealing in equality, you know, respecting each other as men, you know? And everything is, is great since then. Now, my next question is, you, I mean, you mentioned RZA briefly, to, to make a point, of course, um, as a frame of reference. Um, now, when Wu-Tang dropped, right, it was, a, you know, it was ill to see or to hear. It was amazing to hear so many of the guards dropping them, them gems, them hot lyrics to them fire RZA beats. I wanted to know, um, did you ever work with RZA at one point, you know, that we may not be privy to? Yeah, RZA was on my solo album. We got a song called Deep Space. That's a okay. fucking classic. Uh, <laughs> Deep Space. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I fucks with Wu-Tang since they first came out. But even before they first came out, like, they used to be at a lot of our shows, like, Cause I think they was like, yo, they, you know, they the gods, we the gods, like, you know what I mean? Like, but they wasn't even necessarily Wu-Tang at that time. You know, I remember Prince Rakim and, you know what I mean? And, um, the genius, you know? So, uh, yeah, but I fucks with Wu-Tang and I, I, I've, I've had a lot of, you know, relationships and creative relationships with different members of Wu-Tang and, and some of their affiliates over the years. Okay. So um, this question is this, like, um, you know, we see you were one of the first hip hop artists, you know, back in the day that we seen rocking dreadlocks. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Fit you well and all that, you know? Um, nowadays, you see a lot of these youngins rocking a lot of dreadlocks. I mean, some on some green, some on some purple shit. Some got some damn beads and barrettes in their hair. You know what I mean? But you were one of the first to actually rock dreadlocks. You know what I mean? How does it make you feel to see, you know, that exterior cultural expression being rocked so much in hip hop nearly 30 years after you were one of the ones we seen first rocking dreads? I mean, <clears throat> see, when I did it, it was, it was definitely a form of, for me, it was a form of rebellion. It was a, f it, I was trying to say, you know, you can look like your authentic African self and still be successful, mm -hmm. basically, mm -hmm. is what the message was. And fuck these, you know what I mean? <laughs> fuck yeah. these motherfuckers, what they are telling you is the standard of, you know, what's acceptable and all of that, or, you know. All of that shit. Be your black self. You know? And I just felt like, you know, just that revolutionary spirit. And also, this is what a black warrior looks like. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because that's where the dreads really came from. Like, you know, when... when um, Because the Rasta scene, when the, when the brothers was fighting in the... What was it? The Congo or some shit like that in Africa. These brothers had dreads in the jungle and all of that type of shit, and they'd scared the shit out of the white man. 
you know, when they was fighting them at night. <clears throat> it was dreadful to these white people, you know? So I liked, that was part of why I wanted them too, just that, you know, it was a lot of different reasons. Fast forward to where we are now. They're not getting dreads for that reason, mm -hmm. you know. Dreads now is the hairstyle of a, of a street drug dealer or something mm -hmm. like that. You know, it's not, it's lost its spiritual connection. Mm -hmm. See, we also understood that those were antennas that drew energy in, That's right. you know. Um, like I really learned about and was inspired to grow dreads from talking to a, a real Rasta dude, you know what I mean? Like, so these guys, you know, first of all, they're going to the beauty parlor, you know, <laughs> they don't even want to wait. Like to for them to grow, they'll go get the extensions and just put them in tomorrow. <laughs> and now let them just start, you know, growing from there, I guess, you know. Um, and then, yeah, they're dying the tips and all of that type of shit. Like, I never went to no uh, beautician and no shit like that to get my <laughs> dreads done. You know what I mean? Like, I have my woman grease my scalp, and that's it. You know what I mean? It ain't going to be all this, you know, putting pins and shit in your hair. And, nah, nah, nah. We don't do that. Like, But I done seen motherfuckers do that, you know? So, yeah. A Rasta would call that a boba dread. Ah, no. A boba dread, like a fake <laughs> fussy dread. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, um, in your opinion, I want to know, what do you think the obsession with R and B's singers and rappers with being with another man's wife, another man's woman, you know what I'm saying? Another man's girl. You know, what does that obsession stem from? I mean, it's gotten to the point where, you know, you got men seem like they're ready to fight over sharing the same woman. You know, speak on that a little bit. That's funny. Because they're always like, I'll fuck you, bitch. Mm -hmm. You know, that <laughs> is like... A running theme. I'll fuck your bitch. I'll fuck your bitch. I, I mean, I guess it stems from insecurity, really. <laughs> well, really, it's the, the the nigga who's saying I fuck your bitch. Really, he's scared that somebody else might fuck his bitch. So he <laughs> wants you to be nervous mm. that your bitch is gonna get fucked. Do you know? I mean, yeah. I'm. 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 Yes. I'm belittling him. Right. I'm trying to make him less feel like less of a man, right. and that. I was more than a man of you, than you. That's why I was able to fuck your girl. So, I mean, and, 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 and what's the purpose of that? That's just more ego shit. Like, mm -hmm. who, what satisfaction do you get? Is there any spiritual satis satisfaction from that? Mm -hmm. No. The only satisfaction is to the ego. The ego says, ah, yes. I am a liver nigga than him. Look at that. <laughs> I fucked this bitch. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, but so what? Right. <laughs> like, so what? Like, no, you know, really, that means nothing. I mean, she was untrustworthy. God damn it. She was the dumb one. Mm -hmm. And obviously, she's duped by dumb niggas. <laughs> crazy, right? Crazy, crazy, crazy. All right, so I'm going to transition into another question, all right? Now, BET Awards just popped off. You had a chance to rapper. Um, what was the award he won? Best New Artist, something like that. Um, it was like a humanitarian award. 
Okay, well, he won an award, and he's fairly new to the game, okay? I wanted to know, um, you know, um, Chance the Rapper, he's a, a Chirac rapper that, you know, it seems like he really has, um, really understands what's going on and what kind of needs to be done, and he's um, independent. He's independent, no pun intended. He's independent, you know what I mean? I want to know, have you, Brother Lord Jamal, ever had a chance to, you know, build with Chance the Rapper, or you know what I'm saying, or really ever had a chance to build with him, or... Nah, I never met that brother. I've never come in contact with him yet, but I'm sure I will. Probably be a powerful build. Would you think if you ever had the chance to meet with that brother and really get a chance, you know, you and your, your, your wisdom and you being around like that, would you be ever interested in building with that brother? Absolutely. I, like, I, I, I'm all about building with whoever. It's not, you don't have to be famous and all of that type of shit. Like, you know, you just got to be, you know. Whatever you're talking about got to resonate. That's, That's right. all. Mm -hmm. That's all. Okay. Um, so, powerful interview, man. You covered a lot. A lot of information. I mean, you're, you're a, a wellspring of information, of history. You are a living legend. Um, you know what I'm saying? This right here will be archived as one of the great interviews here on this platform. And we have great interviews you know, when we conduct interviews with great legends as yourself, I mean, this always tops the last interview in my appointment. It just keeps getting better and better, which goes to show you that, um, you know, that we get better with time. It just gets better with time. Like that old song by, um, it just gets better with time. <laughs> you know what I mean? What was that by the uh, whispers, you know? My question um, to you, my brother, is this. Um, in your opinion, you know, um, what is your foresight? on the future of hip-hop music where do you see this going considering the state of hip-hop now i mean there's never there's never one road there's only potentials mm. you know there's potential paths that it can go down we can e it can either come to a point where somebody says where people collectively say, all right, hang on. We do realize this shit is bugging. We need to fucking get back to the root of what hip hop is really about right. and fucking start doing some shit like that. We were bugging. Sorry. We understand. Money is not everything. That's a potential. Or there's a potential that this shit could just keep going in the direction that it's going in the way that it's going till eventually we have you know the equivalent of a Kenny G of of hip hop meaning Kenny G right now represents like jazz music you know like white people <laughs> are in the jazz space where that was totally a black genre. Mm -hmm. And like hip hop is going down the path where you're going to have some corny fucking white dude, you know, doing a cover to Bad and Bougie or some shit like that. <laughs> and he's going to be a star, mm -hmm. you know, like he's going to look like a genius, like, oh, my God. Like, all he's doing is playing songs from, you know? <laughs> he redid Shook Ones or some shit like that. You know, like, come on. Um, but did it mad corny. Yeah. You see? Yeah, but did yeah. it mad corny. I got you stuck off the realness. I be the infamous you heard of us. <laughs> Fish of Queen Bridge Murderers. You see what I'm saying? Some real corny oh, white so shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, that's a potential. Mm -hmm. That can happen. Or there could be a divergence where motherfuckers say, okay, what these guys are doing is not hip-hop. So, y'all need to name that something else and let that branch of the tree go off over here. You see? Just name that mumble rap. Name it something else. But hip hop is over here, and this is what hip hop does, and this is what hip hop sounds like. Right, right. And, you know, 
these are all different potential paths. I can't say for sure what's going to happen. Mm. Right now, the odds of the of the you know of the one where this turns into the Kenny G of rap, you know, the Kenny G's of hip hop, mm -hmm. like that's feasible right now. But I'm an optimist, you know, and I believe that with enough voices, you know, and enough collective mind power, you know, because we're the conscious ones. We're the, you know, we have the strength. We got to just really put that mind power together. This is how pyramids are made. Without lifting a finger. You know what I mean? But but every it, you know everybody got to think as one mm -hmm. at that moment. That's right. Not that we all got to think alike at every moment of the day, but at the moments we need to, mm -hmm. that's when we need to get in sync. That's right. And I ain't talking about the boy band. <laughs> you know what I mean? Copies. I'm talking about with each other for real. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Now, this is my last question, all right, before we conclude this great interview, right? Um, yeah, um, but this is one, that, that was the last one, but this is one that I, I feel is um, critically, critically incumbent that, you know, we mentioned Prodigy here with, um, you know, because mm -hmm. he is definitely, to many, any true hip hop heads, a real certified legend in the hip hop rap game. No doubt about it, bar none. Infamous Mob Deep, legends, you know? Um, he started to get into certain kind of awareness, heightened his awareness and his level of consciousness, understanding social realities, and understanding the lies that we were all subjected to Okay, to a great extent, um, collectively as a people, he started to come into this awareness, and you would hear it reflect in his rhymes. One of the first people that you ever heard really mention the Illuminati. Illuminati want my mind, soul, and my body. Secret society trying to keep their eye on me. You know, and another song on the original gangster soundtrack with the Almighty RSO back in '95. He said, "Now they got a now they got Illuminati all on our back." Trying to see if we do crimes or pay tax. The war's on, no time to lax. Build the arsenal. Got word back from Apostle. Unoriginal man. Got plans colossal. Now, you know, he was coming into enlightenment at a young age, you know, at, at, at a young time in his career, you know. Now, my question, because a lot of people don't have their conspiracies about what happened. He died the day after National Sickle Cell Awareness Day. He dies the next day. Um, he dies around the same time the Tupac movie come out. Tupac said, hey, you don't mess around and catch a seizure and die from a heart attack or something messing with me. You know, he dies from a seizure. Now, I'm not trying to put this together to ask a conspiratorial question like most people are. He choked on an the egg. They got him. My question more so is on a personal level. Did you ever have a chance to meet Prodigy to build with that? to build with that great brother and if so what was like the energy like between you two share that with the people if you did have that experience with that brother well first of all peace rest in peace, rest in peace. prodigy um yeah I had many i had many interactions with him you know um my group Dead Prez fucking part of the reason I even went up to Loud that we even wanted to go to Loud was because fucking Mob Deep was up there Wu-Tang was up there you know what I mean and, and, and we would have loved to have been on the same label with motherfuckers like that mm. you know so when, I, when I'm going up there to shop the Dead Prez shit you know, I ended up seeing P up in there, you know. And, you know, we just ended up kicking it. Like, you know what I mean? 
I think that's back when his daughter was just born or some shit like that, you know? Um, yeah, matter of fact, it was. Let me just talk about shit like that, listen to some of his new, uh, some of that new Mob Deep, mm -hmm. fucking um, playing some of that uh, Dead Press for him and all that in the office and shit like that. Um, and he just seemed like, you know, a real dude, just like, you know, he seemed like one of them dudes from my era, like, you know what I mean? Like, even though he was younger than me, his, his, his energy was that, you know what I mean? That real street 80s, you know what I mean? Real, that raw gang. Yeah, raw like, 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 like the type of motherfuckers that I would run with, like, right. you know what I mean? Like, he seemed like that type of dude. So whatever, like, then maybe a little bit of time passed. Matter of fact, we was, um, we shooting one of Dead Press first videos for the These Are The Times, Happiness, and forget the other song. But anyway, we were shooting a scene in Brooklyn and fucking Prodigy ended up coming through, fucking hopping in the scene. You know, it was a scene where niggas was like robbing a, a supermarket or some shit mm -hmm. like that. So. Prodigy ended up jumping in the scene and you know what I mean? Mm. Making his little cameo and I thought that was some cool shit. Um Yeah, then I think I, I then fast forward, I think the next time I seen him maybe was Well nah nah nah, I seen him other times before, before that. After that. But fast forward when he was first getting out of jail, you hear my dog snoring? Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't don't put on it but um yeah so then um i think he was just getting out of jail for whatever the last time he was in jail and he had gained a little weight and all of that and i remember seeing him at this uh malcolm x day celebration up at the you know the autobahn ballroom and all of that but it was outside and I think it was something, yeah, something the source was given. Papoose was there. Um, shout out my man. Um, damn. Londell. Londell McMillan from the source. So he's the one that invited us out there. And, and yeah, P was out there. I remember um, kicking it with him that day. But then I saw him not too long ago, and it was funny because now I've I've seen him, met him a few times over the years. But he was like, "Yo, what's up, yo?" He was like, "Yo, it's good, it's good to meet you." <laughs> and I'm like, "Bro, I met you before, you know what I mean?" And he's like, he said, "Nah," he said, "But I was." He said, man, I was probably fucked up back then. He said, this the first time I'm really meeting you. And I was like, mmm. You know? And he seemed like, you know, he definitely was kind of in a clear headspace and, you know? And I was like, wow. That's, that's some shit. Like, you know? That's some shit. You never know. Um... But yeah, he definitely was a real dude. I feel I felt his aura, you know, real recognized, real, and you know that album, that album with Shook Ones and all of them fucking classics on it. That was like one of my, it's one of my favorite hip hop albums of all time, probably. Yeah, probably one of my favorites of all time. Oh, yeah. Rest in peace. Prodigy. Rest in peace, Prodigy. Um, and, uh, family, friends, shout out to Queensbridge, the Grady family, some of my extended people of peoples out there in Queensbridge. Um, and we, this concludes, you know, this interview. 
And I wanted to thank you and give you devil, double honor, which was definitely duly deserved to you, my brother. It was an honor and a privilege to allow us into your home to conduct yet another great interview with the God. You know what I'm saying? The legend, right? Right. right here, Black News 102. Right. And in closing, I also want to say this. Make sure that you definitely attend, you definitely attend the, uh, the House of Consciousness Unity Rally, okay? Right on August 13th, make sure that you are definitely in the building. You know, this is a very critical time for our people, and unity is a very critical thing that we need to consider. So in closing, I want to say peace and black power. Unify or we die. Peace. On August 13th, 2017, all roads lead to the reunion. I love it. This is what's happening. It's the House of Consciousness reunion celebration coming August the 13th. Hey man, this should this your cap. Captain Tazar, y'all, Kavai should be killed the Commander Jenny Hunter, man, August 13th at the Alhambra Ballroom right here in Harlem, man. They're having a conscious community reunion. A lot of brothers gonna come in the building. Um, I'll be in the building as well. A lot of sisters gonna be in the building, man. It's gonna be a great event. Brothers coming from all across the country, all across the world to this event. So y'all should come out there, man, because we're gonna present actual solutions. Now, I can't speak for everybody else, but